rudest employee ever was in the area and went to challengers just to look if there are any new comic titles that I might have missed to download digital versions of. This sloppy, fat tattooed guy with a messy beard that looked like a bird's nest walks up to me and asks if I'm looking for something specific. I told him no, I'm just looking to see if there are any new titles out there that I might have missed putting on my list of comic titles to download off the internet. Then the dude goes off on me telling me I shouldn't download pirate comics and that I should buy them, support the industry, blah blah blah. Sorry, with comic books going for $5 or more a book these days, I'm not going to spend money on something I can get off the web for free. If the dude didn't like that I wasn't buying anything, he should have just kept his mouth shut. You don't go off on people like that. Talk about being totally unprofessional. With an employee like that, this comic book shop deserves to go belly up with the rest of the comic book shops dropping like flies. Come on and visit for any occasion. Don't keep patent out waiting. Comics and conversation. Keep the conversation moving along. Keep reading comics. Keep your local store strong. If it's hard, then it's a job for the challenger. Comics and conversation, y'all. From Challengers Comics and Conversation in Chicago, this is Contest of Challengers. And now, here are Patrick Brower and W. Dal Bush. If I do it again, it won't have that natural... Spontaneity. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, and anyway, anyway, clearly, people have already heard something at the start of this episode, and I think that we need to immediately delve into it, so... Give it some context? Those who haven't followed this story okay and it's a story dal it's it's, dal, a, it's a story it had a few moves on it i wasn't expecting right so what you just heard gina challenger read and i'd like to point out that gina challenger was reading that she did not write that we don't know that that is not from her we don't know that that is a yelp review that we got last weekend last i don't know friday saturday. or saturday last saturday, saturday. From a very disgruntled person who is very entitled. And a little a little backstory first. This very same person had started to post to our Facebook page about comics being too expensive and people should just pirate them. And he was yes. doing it... To our page. To a comic shop. Well, <laughs> he was doing it in the body of the event listing for Daniel Warren Johnson's Wonder Woman Dead Earth signing. Mm -hmm. And... He'd said, oh, this, book's, this book looks real good. I, uh, I can't wait to pirate it and get it for free because books are too expensive. So I just hid his comment. And on Facebook, a business can hide a comment, which means that that person can still see it. So they think it's still active and their friends can see it, but nobody else can. Mm. And then after the book came out, he started posting links to a site where you could literally read the book for free wow you can pirate the book that's so terrible. at that point i blocked him mm -hmm. so this is middle of december like december 19th or 20th mm -hmm. i want to take a quick sidebar you know what? I'll, I'll say that till later it's uh it i might forget it but it has a more relevance later okay so at that point i blocked him so he's he doesn't see our stuff he can't post fine whatever cut to about a month later where we get this yelp review and in it, well, you know what? I'm not going to go into detail on that. We have a very eloquent reply from our own W. Dow Bush. Oh, yeah, I did. I wrote something. So uh, the, the review is posted sometime in the late evening or early, later, late evening, Friday, or early morning, Saturday. So when I got up Saturday, I got a notification from Yelp saying, hey, you've got a new review. So I read it and I was confused and a little frustrated by it. And... Uh, did, so did Gina read the, the original version? Yes. Okay, so there's a second paragraph there where I'm like, most of this is kind of horrible, and I don't think it ever happened, but the second paragraph is incredibly insulting and aggressively rude, and that can't be Yelp's policy. So they, they I can't allow that. Yeah, I, I flagged it. Um, they have a, a few different categories, and I thought, well... Like, there was one that was, like, threats or hate speech, and I'm like, it's kind of that one because it's just, it's just personal attacks, and it's, it's gross, and it's mean, and it has no bearing on a store's business or, or uh, someone's experience. It's just someone taking shots at somebody, and that's not what I would think Yelp is for. So I flagged it, and I sort of forgot about it for a minute, and then you and I were talking in the early morning, and I thought, 
I'm going to tell Patrick about this because Patrick is somebody who's usually very excited by people picking a fight with him because then he really wants to respond. Uh, you had kind of a weird reaction where you were kind of subdued about it and you didn't seem like you wanted to, to really have it have happened, let alone like want to, to take point on responding to it. Well, my, my whole thing was, I don't care. Okay. This guy is an asshole, clearly. Well, I was upset by it um, because I, as soon as I, I read it and, and saw you, I said, oh, this never happened, right? And you're like, no, it never happened. Because it didn't sound like how we would normally deal with things. And I, I was offended, not just as, as a one of the people who owns the business, but uh, Patrick Pryor is a friend of mine. And when people take shots at him, I don't feel good about that. So I didn't want it to be a thing where it's just like, this guy kind of got away with it. So I said, do you want me to respond? I already flagged it. Do you want me to, to post a response too? And you said, go ahead. Well, because of the conversation we had and the things that you had said that you would say uh -huh. if you were responding, I'm like, you've already put far more thought into this than I would have. Yeah. Like, yeah, do it. You're you're more eloquent in these occasions. And I spent a couple of minutes thinking about it, and it was going to be a thing where, like, well, I'll do it later today. Like, literally, as soon as I got to River North, I'm like, oh, I'm going to start working on this. And I did up a, a, a version of it, and I sent it to you, and you said you liked it, so I posted it, and this is, I guess, what I posted. Yeah, so do you want me to read it, or do you want to read it? Be my guest. Okay. People got to get that bingo somehow. Wow. A lot to unpack here. A lot to unpack. First... Just going to lead off with, this never happened. We've heard from a few people over the years that they read, di they read books digitally, and some even tell us that they pirate a book or two. Do you know what we do when th then that happens? We walk away. We don't want to spend time yelling at strangers any more than strangers want to be yelled at. So yeah, this 100% never happened in our store. You've been posting to our Facebook page that you pirate comics. We get it. You've got an agenda. Why that agenda needs to include made-up stories and one-star Yelp reviews, I mean, it's just getting sad. Are you okay? It can't be fun feeling this way. Second, insulting and degrading someone on a Yelp review? Way over the line. Completely inappropriate. If you want to lie about things that happen in our store, I'm frustrated, but I don't expect you to feel bad about it, ever. But insulting people who work here, who work there? That you should absolutely feel bad about. That you owe someone an apology. Finally, let's talk about the monumental entitlement at the core of your story. Like I said, we let people pirating books roll off our backs when we hear about it in our store. But coming to our Yelp page, making something up, trashing our reputation, all to brag about pirating comics? Yeah, now we can talk about it. So, in your story... The proper thing to do when someone goes into a business specifically to scout out content they intend to illegally download at a later date is what exactly? Should you have been thanked for demanding both the artists worldwide work for free and that the stores that you despise act as showrooms for you to make your theft more efficient? How does that seem reasonable to you? Also, and this one really had my head spinning, how can you possibly say that someone suggesting you support a medium rather than stealing from it is more detrimental to the long-term survival of an industry than actively refusing to spend money on art? If all the comic shops you hate so much disappeared, where would you even go to find out what comics to steal? How, how does that ecosystem work in your mind? But yeah, man, you want the artists in the comic industry to make high-quality work that you don't want to pay for. You want stores to applaud you for it. You want to post Facebook messages on retail businesses saying no one should pay for anything ever. And then you want to post fake stories and one-star reviews on their Yelp page when they block you. Yeah, that all definitely sounds like a reasonable way to approach things. This is totally healthy and normal. And I think that's a great response. Yeah. Now, one, one of the things we actually we haven't talked about is... Mm -hmm. That event did not happen. Yeah. It, there have it, been so many times over the years uh -huh. when people talk about pirating books, and literally, as you wrote, we just walk away. There's no there's no uh, percentage in telling them that they're wrong and they're, they're hurting the industry, quote, blah, 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 because mm -hmm. they're not going to change their ways, and they're going to get antagonistic about it. This is your proof right here. Yeah, and, and as stated, I, I mean, I don't have... I don't enjoy, like, confronting somebody in the store. Like, I don't want to do that. I don't like doing that when they're stealing from us, physically taking things off the shelves. I don't want to do will. it. You will. You just don't like doing yeah, it. Yeah, I don't like doing it. 
but I, I feel even less inclined to do anything when it's someone stealing something digitally from the digital realm. Like, I don't, whatever, man. It's, people make their own decisions and people know if it's right or wrong and they're making a decision anyway. And I, I, I'm not their mom. I'm not their mom. I also guarantee you this is not a guy who is that antagonistic in person. I think he's hiding behind the internet on this. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's, uh, as, a, as a quick sidebar, um, one of the things that was happening almost immediately when we started doing Women's Comics Night is dudes through the internet started to be real weird about it. Yep. Uh, we started to get weird phone calls where people were like, it was clearly men, uh, clearly identifying themselves as men, asking if they could go to this. What, why can't they go to this? And wh what if they say they're women? And it, it, clearly people doing the, like, debate me. And it's like, I don't want to do that. I'm, you, you know what this is for. You know that it's not for you. It's okay for things to not be for you. And I thought for a minute, like, man, what's going to happen when these dudes come to the store? They won't. They'll never do it. They yeah. always block their numbers when they would call the store. Uh -huh. uh, you could never call them back. It was all like, they just want you to feel unsafe. That's all they want. They want you to feel scared or you to feel uneasy. And they're doing it because they know they'll never have to deal with the consequences. You'll never find them. You'll never be able to talk to them. Like, they were never going to come to the store and, like, make a scene, ever. And they never did. To go back even a little further, and I, I think I told the story a while ago on mm. the podcast, uh, long ago, when the store was fairly new. Mm -hmm. Well, not necessarily, but anyway. Uh, at one point, there was a misconnection in the reader for one of the people that worked at Challengers. Mm -hmm. And it was, the thing was like, me... Shy guy who's buying Bendis comics. You, pink-haired girl who was behind the counter. Uh, I didn't have the nerve to talk to you then, so let's talk now. Uh, blah, 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 whatever. So when I saw that, I stepped in and said, Hey, man, what you just did was you publicly called out somebody by describing them to the world. So anybody that works at the store will go, Oh, I know who that one is who that person is, who that employee is, when you're hiding behind your computer and your, uh, I don't know, auto-generated <laughs> numeric ID. Uh -huh. That's not cool. You acknowledge you didn't have the guts to talk to them in person. Why should they talk to you now? I'm not saying don't talk to them. I'm saying man up. <laughs> sure. Talk to them in person. Sure. Don't out them. Don't be like, hey, challengers person who now we all know who you are mm -hmm. why didn't you talk to me yeah like that that's not cool that's not the way you do it yeah and the uh the particular challengers employee chose not to respond in any way sure which which is fine uh i want to mention that again this this story did not happen and no. i feel a little bit bad saying that well we'll feel bad saying that because of what happens next right yeah yeah so basically like saturday in like around noon i i posted that as a public response to this person. I don't know that this was Saturday. It was definitely Saturday. I was, was in it? River North. Okay. Yeah, you gave me a ride. But we talked all about... Oh, yeah, okay. Because we talked about yeah. it in the car. Yeah, you gave Why me Why were you in the car? We, you were dropping off you, the printer. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Now, now yeah. I get it. Now I get it. Then it makes sense. Um, Dow, your timetable is correct. Patrick, thank you. So, around noon on Saturday, I posted this as a public response to this person because I don't just want to message them. They are clearly okay making stuff up this isn't something where i'm going to like find a compromise with them no they're being a jerk and they're being insulting and so i would rather post this publicly they get a, a message saying that someone's posted a public comment but that's public now of being able to say like look i i disagree with this and i already flagged it for for review by yelp so that's kind of the end of it it's kind of out of my mind yeah we get an automated message from yelp like Monday night? Maybe Monday night? Yeah. Saying that, that they reviewed it and they took it down. So yeah, like they, this violates our terms of services. Yeah. No, I think it was like Monday morning. I'm going to take a look. Uh, I the, the messages that I got, I believe, were Tuesday? Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up real quick. Okay. Because once again, we can't have our timeline be wrong on this. Yeah, we're I mean, the, we're, we're a day either way. It's either it was taken down Sunday night or Monday night. Sure. January 11th, which was what? What was January 11th? I don't know. The 15th was Wednesday. I gotta look. So Sunday. January 11th, which was Saturday. What? 
Okay. Sa- Saturday, according to this. Wait, hold on. No, what okay, day is sa- it today? Okay, so Saturday they're going to review it. Is that that's the one I got? Okay. The thirteenth. They which was Monday. It, which was Monday. Right. Okay. Monday around eight forty-five p.m. is right. when I got it. So Monday night, I get an email from Yelp. We get an email from Yelp saying, "Hey, we reviewed it." I'm going to read this part out. After assessing the review carefully against our content guidelines, we agree that this review should be removed. So as far as I'm concerned, that's the end of it. Yeah. Until Tuesday, 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 which is a busy day for both of us Uh as we have books to unpack and and, and boxes. A busy busy day for you, for sure. Sure. (laughs) Uh, I get a message from uh, our good friend and patron, Robert Burns, Mm -hmm. which is a screen cap of that review with the the guy's name blurred out Mm -hmm. and it turns out that this was posted on reddit in the cheesing beggars section and subreddit subreddit and that section is basically people who screen cap rants from people who are being unreasonable to i don't know like service people or you know uh yeah, like reading over the comments for this one, there was somebody had had talked about how there was a different one star Yelp review for a grocery store because someone complained that the store would not let them steal things. Yeah, or call the police on him for stealing. Yes, yeah. So at first, I'm like, oh no, this can't be good. Yeah, when when any business goes viral, it's like, oh god, what did we do? Uh, so at that point, there were like 900 comments. And it's Reddit, so a lot of the comments uh, digress. Mm -hmm. A lot of Simpsons references, as that guy had Simpson references in his review. Mm -hmm. And a lot of uh, just digressions. Uh And uh, side note, now it's up to 1,300 comments. Wow, that's a lot. And, uh, you know, the general rule of the internet is don't read the comments. But (laughs) I just wanted it, because I don't fully understand Reddit. Uh Actually, I don't even partially understand Reddit. And It's like a message board. Well, I guess, but I never did message boards before. Okay. And I don't understand the direction they go in, and I don't know how the AMAs work. But anyway, it was on uh, Choosing Beggars on Reddit, and 99% of the comments were all defending or praising the interaction. Yeah, I mean, in fairness, some of that is self-selecting. Like like you said, it's a subreddit that's built around the idea of people... I'm sorry, I feel like I need to clarify. I said praising the interaction. We're on the side of challengers. Sure. Which, again, I, I feel like is a little self-selecting because it's a subreddit for people who are looking to read reviews of people who are acting unreasonably at a business. Yeah. So the people who are already like, I can't wait to see what crazy things someone said about a business that they should never have said. So they were primed already to sort of be on our side. Which, I, but still, I, it was kind of gratifying to see that a review that, that thankfully had been removed got people saying, oh man, this guy's out of his mind. And like you, like you were saying a minute ago, we felt kind of bad because it's like this never happened and you kind of don't want to tell people who are like who are championing you your your action yeah like yeah that guy totally made it up that never even happened like and yet he managed to make up a story that made him look like a complete idiot like that's kind of amazing and maybe even funnier than if this had actually happened to him so that was interesting tuesday night and it felt good and then it felt less good wednesday morning when we got a notification from yelp that the same guy had posted basically the same review he took out the second paragraph edit wanted to describe the employee exactly so customers would know what employee in the business it was but sadly the censors at yelp got all sjw butthurt over the description yelp wants us to describe our experiences with businesses yet we can't give exact descriptions of the employees in the businesses giving us these experiences sad really sad so as you can hear, all he did was change the second paragraph from the hateful description to a employee, mm-hmm. not an, nope. a, 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 and employee. he does that uh, elsewhere with a employee like that. So he just, just says, just takes that out, just says a employee. Mm-hmm. But then has to leave a little postscript. Has to have that postscript. So Dow responded again. Yeah, which, I mean, since he was using 90% of his original erroneous review, I thought, oh, I can use 90% of my response because he didn't change a whole lot. I just have to change my paragraph where I call him out for being insulting to somebody that is a friend of mine. Here's Dal's reply. Second, boy, that little postscript. You got your previous version of this review removed from Yelp for being untrue and full of offensive personal attacks against us. So you repost it with the same untrue statements, 
but now with offensive personal attacks against Yelp? We've got the homophobic butthurt, SJW as a pejorative, claims of censorship when a company enforces the terms of service to which you've already agreed, we're only a snowflake and an I'm sorry you were offended away from a slightly chastened and weirdly combative internet commenter bingo. Why is this worth reposting when Yelp already told you that you were behaving inappropriately? It's like going to someone's house, insulting them, being removed, then going back to their house to tell them how mad you are at being removed. And this next line is my favorite line. Thank you. It's no surrender to re-examine your behavior. Thank you. So good. It's such a weird internet thing. I mean, people, like, as soon as they're called out on something, they gotta dig their heels in. They gotta double down on every bad behavior. Like, if you're an adult, it's okay if someone goes, hey, you're being offensive, to go, wow, I'm sorry, I will... What did I do wrong? Let me do better next time. Like, why is that the antithesis of the internet? Why is so much of the internet just... Hey, man, you said something you shouldn't have. Well, I don't think I said anything wrong. Okay, you did, and here's why. Okay, well, I don't agree with that. No, and, you're wrong and, for being offended. And why would you even call me out on that? And, why, and just, it, it, there's no discussion. There's no self-examination. Everything is just, I'm 100% right, and if you're calling me out, you're 110% wrong. And it's like, just, this guy has to come back and say how mad he is still. And it's just like, just let it go. Why is this so important to him to to have this version of himself on the internet? Like I don't I don't understand how this is worth somebody's time. Like it's worth my time because it's my business. Yeah, and you don't like, want people coming across who, that not knowing the context. Who is this guy and why does he need to like post a like a long mean fake review to Yelp, have it get pulled, then edit it just enough to and this is the punchline completely get by Yelp's terms of service. So I saw this review and I'm like, well, he's still making stuff up and now he's being a jerk. Um, but just to a company instead of to us and uh, people who work for Challengers. So I, I flagged it and I said that it's, you know, taking shots at Yelp, which doesn't seem cool. And uh, also completely untrue still. Still. To which, so that was uh, Wednesday morning. Yeah, so basically Dow posted a reply, then flagged it to Yelp again, saying, hey, it's the same thing, but this time he's going after you and not us. Yeah. So and then you get the generic, hey, we're going to review this, we'll let you know. Yep. And so this was, what, Wednesday night? 15th? 7.39 p.m.? Yeah. After careful evaluation, we have decided not to remove this content. When reviewing user content, we look at a number of factors, including potential conflicts of interest, threatening or lewd commentary, and whether the content has been posted to the correct business page. If a review falls within the bounds of our tolerance for strong language, appears to meet our guidelines, and reflects the user's personal experience and opinions, it is our policy to let the user stand behind their review. Business owners can address any concerns or misunderstandings via their business account by posting a public comment or sending a message to the reviewer. That's it. So this guy gets to make up this story that basically has at its crux that our entire business shouldn't exist and our store individually should definitely not exist. And we have no recourse. Yelp's just like, meh. So that's a kind of amazing way to conduct a business. And I told you afterwards that I was a little grateful um, for getting that message from Yelp. Um, obviously, I don't like the idea that someone can post uh, a blatantly untrue anecdote as a one-star review that negatively affects our business because of the way Yelp's rankings will prioritize high reviews. So a one-star review like that negatively weights our business and keeps us from getting a higher listing in the uh, the results that people get, which means that less people will find us on Yelp, which means less people will find our store, which means less people will spend money at our store, which means this guy is making sure that through his cruel actions uh, that he is actually winning and negatively affecting our business and making it less likely that we'll continue to exist. So that part, uh, not a fan of. No, nope. But the one part I am a fan of, and the one silver lining to this dark cloud of bullshit, is that uh, Yelp, a company that constantly antagonizes me by never, ever letting no, we're not interested in advertising with Yelp stand as an answer, now gave me a perfect response. So that when they call us, and when they email us, and when they badger us about 
buying more services from Yelp, whatever that may be, whether it's advertising or boosting our listings or whatever bullshit they ask us to do, I can go, no, because I don't trust your platform at all. And I'm not saying this as like a quid pro quo, remove this and we'll start spending money. What it is, is that clearly they are not interested in any way in policing their platform beyond the barest minimum of actionable hate speech. So why would I want to give them any money to be more integrated into the Yelp culture when I think that culture is inherently toxic and self-serving? Like, what? Why would I want to be a part of that? Like, I'll be on your platform because there you you clearly monopolized business search. Yeah. Like, we could delist ourselves on Yelp tomorrow if we wanted to. We're on there voluntarily. But if we do that, boy, would that negatively impact our business. So many people would never find us ever again. Yeah, it, unfortunately, it, it is a thing that, that works. And while Google yeah. is doing a good job of making their reviews, uh, we get a lot more Google reviews sure. lately, nowadays, than I, we do Yelp reviews. I think it's easier to do. I've yeah. asked people who have, like, Android phones, and it's mostly just that when they go to a business, they'll get a little notification saying, hey, do you want to review Challengers? Yeah. As opposed to Yelp, where you would have to go there and do it. And clearly, the only people incentivized to do that... Um, are people that lately, really love a business lately. or people that have access to grind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we don't get a lot of two and three star reviews. We get fives or ones. Uh, thankfully, more fives than ones. But boy, it's going to look worse now that we got that one. Also, because it's more recent, it's probably going to populate a little higher when you go to our page. So that's awesome. Definitely a fun experience with Yelp, uh, a company that I, I respect deeply, uh, that seems to have the best interest of, of not just the people who use their platform, but the businesses that make up their platform. They really care about them. Um, that's what I learned this week. We've mentioned this before, but every couple of months, it seems like our account gets a new account rep. Yeah. Which then they have to prove their worth. And like, we're going to land this this client. We're yeah. going to get money out of them. So they do the hard press and phone calls and emails. And uh, now when the phone rings and it's Yelp, I just don't answer it. No. Which is detrimental because occasionally it's like a, a Yelp employee with a comic question. Sure, but mostly. Mostly, it's a ninety-nine it's a times person. out of a hundred, it's it's the new salesperson. Yeah. And we tell them, kind of the same thing. Like we're not interested right now. We may be in the future. We will let you know when we're ready to move on this. You don't need to call us in a month, three months, six months, whatever they try to get Two you on the hook for next Thursday. Um, like we will let you know when our position changes. So even if you can get that one rep to be like, okay, I understand. It's not in my company's best interest to keep badgering you. It's making you less likely to spend money with us. I will let it go and you'll let me know when you are ready to spend money. That rep's going to be gone. They're not going to yeah. be your rep long term. They're nope. not your rep for the next five, ten years. They're your rep for a few months. And then a few months a new rep comes on and that rep has no idea that you would not like to be phone called and emailed. So they just, like Patrick said, do the, the hard press. And it's like, not nah, so we, we, uh Now after, I have a great answer, though. Sure, but after not getting anywhere with us, our, our current sales rep, uh, calling them our current sales rep sounds like we picked them or we yeah. have a relationship. They're, the current cold caller and e cold emailer finally emailed and said, I guess I'm going to leave you alone. I guess you don't want any new customers to your business. Uh, they didn't say it like no, that. No, but, it was very like, hey, let me know when, when you're ready to, to work with Yelp. And when you're ready to, to, I think it was like... Uh, have more business. Like de having... deal with more new customers or something. Like it was a very like, I get that you're busy right now, but when you are when you have time to deal with a huge influx of customers y'all could give you, let me know. See, I didn't take it so much as, oh, when you have time, we can do that. It was, uh, oh, you're missing out. This is on you. Uh, I think this is on you. I think it's splitting the difference between those two views. Okay. Um, yeah, so... Uh, had had a little bit of, of annoyance with Yelp and then a little bit of fun with Yelp and then a huge amount of annoyance with Yelp. I just, like, I, it should have been a warning sign to me because when you go to flag a review as a business owner, there's a few different options you can choose. And again, one was like threats and hate speech. One was like, this isn't for my business. One was like, this did not reflect someone's experience. But there's one where it's like, this review is inaccurate. And when you choose that, that does not even submit a flagged review to Yelp. It doesn't go any farther because what they then say is, if it's inaccurate, deal with the reviewer. Yeah, contact them directly. Yeah, sort this post out. a public comment, uh, message them. 
So basically, if someone is in there with an axe to grind, someone who you cannot make it right with because they are using Yelp to attack your business, you have zero recourse. They get away with it. There's nothing you can do. And that's honestly kind of terrifying because nearly every other internet platform, social media or otherwise, has a thing where you can go to a person and go, this is someone who is weaponizing your platform to attack users. And they will, theoretically, do something about it. And this is Yelp saying, fundamentally, no. Not interested in doing that. If people want to attack your business using our platform, as long as they're putting their, their name on it, which is first name and last initial, yeah, uh, Yelp's fine with it. Yeah, obviously this person doesn't have a, a picture of themselves. No. So you have no idea who they are. And all their other reviews are, like, half of them are one star. And, like, a one star review is for egregiously bad service or, you know, you ordered a hamburger, you got a rat on a bun, something. Sure. But this is this and, is exposing the other side of Yelp. Like, people are weaponizing Yelp. Well, that wasn't all. Then I get a text from our good pal Kyle Starks. Uh-huh. Rick and Morty writer, uh, the successful Kickstarter creator. Kill them all. Sex Castle, Kyle Starks. With a link to a British website, uh, .co.uk site, which you would think would make me ecstatic. All about this. Basically saying, hey, look at this Reddit post about this uh, user that is stupid. Yeah, and I mean, like, I'm glad that people think it's funny. I'm glad that people, everybody apparently but the person who posted it, can see that it's, like, even if it were true, it's not a business's fault. Like, this is not... No one in that guy's story at the business he's talking about did anything wrong. Like, the idea that you can come into a business and say, oh, I don't need any help. I'm just going to be stealing all this later online. And expect a business to be like, all right, high five, dude. You did it. I, I Thank like, God. I like in that review that he fictitiously has me coming up and asking if he needs help. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. That's a good thing that never no, happened. No. Y you, if you weren't okay with him digitally stealing this content, not just from you, but from the creators who make it, you should have just shut up. Yeah, keep my mouth keep shut. Keep your mouth shut. So, yeah. Um, I, I like how uh, when the person who's apparently the president of this country... Mm -hmm. Uh, attacks Greta Thunberg, mm -hmm. how every time she changes her Twitter um, description uh -huh. to match what he said. That's nice. I almost did that with uh -huh. this, but our Twitter account is not just me, it is the store. True. So it just wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, I, I'm just... Yes, I, uh, I, I would like to point out, sloppy? Yeah, I... Am I a sloppy person? You're not, Patrick. Fat, I... tattooed guy? Sure. Messy beard? No. No disagree with that bird's just... nest uh i've seen a lot of bird nests they're concave and birds sit in them and they're made of the thatch they're frequently eggs yeah, yeah no like, eggs in you, there you can't there, there are literally egg. no eggs in my beer yeah, none. but here's here's a point i was going to make before so okay. obviously this guy thinks that comics are too expensive and they should be free blah 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 the site that he linked to mm -hmm. I went and I looked at it, and I, whenever I find sites like these, I report them to the legal departments of DC and Marvel and Image and whomever. Sure. Uh, I got a response from uh, DC that said these guys are like whack-a-mole. Yeah. Every time you take one down, there's another one. Yeah, because it, it costs next to nothing to put them up. It's all just aggregated Wait, content. It's funny that you say that, Dal, because yeah. this particular site mm -hmm. had a donation button sure. and an explanation that says, hey guys, <laughs> hey guys. this isn't free. Like, I got to pay for the server and, and the domain, and, you know, I constantly got to change servers because they're always trying to shut me down. So, if you would be so kind as to donate to sure. this cause and keep it going. Sure. So, the person that is stealing content and taking money away from the content creators mm -hmm. is asking for money to be able to keep stealing from them. Sure. I mean, a lot of those torrent sites and stuff, I mean, they host ads. That's like they're, but, but they're, I mean, they're making money I, off of letting people pirate content and share pirated content. Like, the, no, very few people. I'm sure there's some people who are just like ethically opposed to paying for entertainment. Just completely, 100 percent, dug their heels in opposed to it. But most people are doing it because it's like the the sites that are running it 
are to make money because there is money in it. There is stupidly money in stealing people's content and letting other people steal it. I don't understand this world. No. I don't I, understand people. I don't understand the comics industry. The Yelp thing is, is the most frustrating to me because this won't be the last time this happens. Like, this won't be the last time that someone decides to go after our business. Not because of anything we did, but just because of their own weird psychological issues. Like, this is somebody... Wh- what exactly did we do? Like, this... Again, this was not an exchange... Blocked them from Facebook. But even then, this isn't an, ex- an exchange that happened in the store. It's not like this guy came in and we were rude to him. And he needed to post about it on the internet. This is someone who made this up because they were so keen to get across the idea that A, comic shop shouldn't exist, and B, no one should pay for comics. And it's like, what, what do I do with that? Then how do comics exist? I, you, well, you can't argue this with, with this guy. Right. I, there's no circumstance under which he's going to pay for comics, and there's no circumstance under which he's going to suggest that people should pay for comics at comic shops. So as someone who runs a comic shop... What is to stop more people like that from posting reviews like that? Like, they don't have to... to well, now they're going to, because you just put it in their heads. To Yelp, they don't have to prove that they bought anything. they're all listeners of this contest of challenges. They don't even the have comics to... industry business podcast. Show either. that they bought Channel anything or shopped at the work. store or even came to the store or checked in or anything. They just get to say that they don't like challengers and that they can make up a story about it. And Yelp's just like, well... Who can know what's true anymore? And it's like, well, Jesus Christ. I mean... I mean, there there have been Yelp reviews where somebody had a bad interaction, and I emailed them and said, hey, you said you had a bad interaction. You didn't elaborate. What was it? I'm like, I know we've lost your business. I know you don't want to come back to our store. But why don't you tell me what happened so this doesn't happen to somebody? No reply. No. Nothing. They just wanted that. Yeah. And it's... I genuinely am not interested in what people post to Yelp. Like, I don't... If people have an experience, good or bad, I don't care what they want to post. I don't want them to feel like they can't be honest. Like, I... But when it's a lie, when it's a full-on made-up story, I can't believe that there's no recourse for us. That we... We're just screwed. We're just like, this guy just wins. And that... The idea that he wins bugs me so much that he got away with it. He got exactly what he wanted. There's a one-star Yelp review on our page forever. And we can post a thing saying, here's why this is wrong and why this guy's a jerk, and people on Reddit can laugh at him. But he won. Laugh all you want. This dude won. That's it. Yelp. I don't know, man. Yelp let him win. I read a bunch of his other Yelp reviews. I do not think he's winning in any facet of his He life. got exactly what he wanted. He got exactly what he wanted. A free copy of... A digital... Free digital copy of Un- Wonder Woman. Unreal. Editor. It bothers me so much more. Well, when things happen reoccurringly that at one point could be devastating, but they're just so regular, you get used to it. For example, if I may... Please... I noticed this week, this uh, this Wednesday, there was a twelve hundred dollar charge to our bank account <laughs> to an ATV company, the no, company that makes all terrain vehicles, and not even the usual ATV company that we deal with, a completely different one. Uh, you joke, but that that's literally a question that they have to ask you. And <laughs> they do. I hope that that no one listens from the bank listens to this and says, "Oh God, oh they do use ATVs." No, I'm kidding. I mean, Christ, you can go through our, our listing. I mean, yeah. go, go through our account summary. We've never, we've never done anything with an right. ATV. And, and that's, what the, that's what they have to do. Right, right of course. We, uh, this sounds like a broken record because back in October, we got identity thieved. Mm-hmm. And when we were setting up accounts for the new store, what are the vendors that we use? And we use a lot of smaller vendors, little mo- like mom and pop vendors, and we pay for things with credit cards and whatnot. Well, one of the vendors we use, it turns out that uh, on, on one of the uh, retailer forums that I follow on Facebook, somebody had posted about them saying, hey, I just got identity thieved right after I placed an order from this company again. <laughs> and it was the day after I had placed an order with that company. Yeah, for a new store. And it's not like, I'm sure if I go, like, uh, I don't know, I always thought it was uh, gas stations, but I took steps to prevent that and or to to mitigate the damage that could do and 
so we had said that, that that was back in November when that happened. And, or I guess, uh, yeah, early November. So we got hit now. I don't know if it's from that company or not, but we got hit again and we get hit a lot. And you have a card to that account. I have a card to that account. I do all the bill paying, so I'm the one who uses my card mm -hmm. for the store often. Mm -hmm. I also use that card for personal things, which I have a completely separate record for. It's all above board. But that's also more usage for that. You never, you rare, no, you occasionally use that card. Yeah. So it's it's never going to be you. It's always going to be from a transaction that I did. So I immediately call the bank, and the first step is they cancel that card, so nothing else can happen. Fine. Uh, however, that transaction was still pending. Mm -hmm. So you have to wait until that transaction posts before you can complain about it, which I always thought that, oh, well, it's pending. You can stop it. Like, oh, this hasn't gone through yet. Stop it. No, it has to happen. Then we can initiate. Right. Yeah, it seems counterintuitive. And also, it's the weirdest thing, but the last couple of times we've been identity thieved, and this has happened, those transactions take a couple of days to post when everything else is like a day. Yeah. I guess because it's so large and so weird. I guess. Like, it's, so, it's not a $15 charge at Subway. It's a $1,200 ATV store. So this has happened so often that I have a system now, and I've even refined the system this time. <laughs> And I, I went and I talked to the bank and because part of me is worried, like they're going to say, hey, this happens to you all the time. We don't want you as a customer anymore. High risk. Yeah, right. They don't care. This happens like even the, the fraud specialist I was talking to, it had happened to her. Sure. And it had happened to the guy at the bank. Like it happens to everybody. It's that's just so that but that's just, you accept it. You're like, OK, right. so what I've done this time is I've come up with a new system to help, again, use that phrase, mitigate the damage. Mm -hmm. So when this happens again, not if, but when it happens again, I don't have to jump through as many hoops. Right. I still have to jump through hoops. And sure. One of the things that I like about PNC is that when this happens, and I'm sure other banks do it as well. I just want a first-hand knowledge now, of that. yeah. You can, like, they do the thing where, oh, you can cancel the card. We can send you out a new card in, uh, you know, eight to ten business days. Or you could go to a PNC bank and they'll make you one on the spot. Yeah, I definitely think that's because this is happening so often. So many people are like, I can't not have a credit card for the next week or so. Like, I need it for other things. I Just looking at River North, I mean, 5% of our business is cash? Less? Yeah, yeah. Like, imagine if those people didn't have credit cards. Um, it's, it's to the degree where a lot of, um, like, if you use, like, Apple Pay and things like that, there's places that will, you, if you get identity thieved with your regular credit card, you can have a brand new number on your Apple Pay account immediately. Wow. And then you can use that at, at any place that uses Apple Pay because they realize that there's people who are just like, I, again, can't not have a credit card for a week or, or a yeah. week and a half yeah. or however long it takes to get it sent out. Like, need to do things tomorrow with a credit card. And it makes me wonder, like, and this is beyond the scope of a comics industry business podcast on the AI Channel Podcast Network, there has got to be a, a solution that, that banks and financial institutions are working on for that because this cannot just be the new normal for credit cards, is everyone's getting identity thieved every couple months, and people who steal these numbers and these cards are racking up millions of dollars in, in fraudulent charges and getting away with it. Like, that... Banks can, I'm sure, write off to a certain degree, but I can't imagine they're happy doing it this consistently. Yeah, like whoever, whatever they bought from this ATV place, they still got their stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just that I'm go hopefully going to get reimbursed for that money. Yeah, like when we had first opened Challengers in Bucktown and people were stealing Pokemon cards, we'd replace them and then people would steal more Pokemon cards. And eventually we went, we're not restocking Pokemon cards. We're done with this. And we, we kept not having Pokemon cards for a while until we could figure out a way to have them where they wouldn't just constantly get stolen. Um, that's a small expenditure for a business like us. I can't imagine what percentage of charges that like Chase or PNC or Fifth Third deals with that are just total write-offs. Like, nope, that money's just gone. Yeah. It's just completely gone and there's nothing you can do about it and you can report it to the FBI or whatever, but no one's ever going to get caught because God knows... Who did it and where and everything's online now, so it's not even a matter of, like, oh, you can go to a store and find out who did this. No, you, you can't. Yeah, and it's not as if the fraud department is going to track that shipment and go to their house. No. 
just again like the amount of money it would cost to do that probably is not worth doing but just the overall like investigating individual ones probably is not something where it's cost effective to do that which makes me think like there's got to be an overall sense of like what can we do to change the process of using a credit card of a credit card number and a credit card and whatever to keep this from happening and there's a few places that are, are doing things like that i know that uh for like the apple card and for apple pay like the big thing is that essentially it's a one-time use credit card number so you you do a transaction online with that number yeah and it creates a token basically that's used to validate the account and to get the money from your bank or your credit card to the vendor but if anyone intercepts the 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 transaction the the token it doesn't matter because it's not good for another use yeah you could you can't use it for anything it's it's worthless beyond that one-time use and there's other companies that i know are doing things for uh their their credit cards to use online where it again creates a one-time use credit card number where that goes through and then you never use it again but for places that have like recurring payments that you're giving your credit card to that are getting hacked constantly and again that's that's what happened here it's not like you lost your credit card or someone whatever it's someone went into to the the vendor that we were dealing with and said oh here's all these credit cards that are on file boom great done yep. so obviously like security is necessary but this does not seem like a a good long-term solution for credit card theft is how the different companies do it now it just doesn't seem right if you want to know about timing mm -hmm. on tuesday i got a letter in the mail from pnc mm -hmm. saying that the investigation for the november uh, identity theft had been completed <laughs> and the temporary funds they granted me were mine to keep. That's terrific. Uh -huh. Thanks, PNC. Because it takes a while for these investigations yeah. to, to go through. Well, I mean, like you said, certainly for you, somebody who's constantly getting identity thieves, they're going to be looking a little closer. Yeah, honestly, by the end of, uh, by the middle of the day on Thursday, mm -hmm. almost everything was taken care of. Yeah. Like the the basically it's the recurring payments that you just mentioned yeah that are the biggest hassle for sure and constantly changing those yeah uh and then i had to wait until this morning until the until it posted to call and talk to a specialist who had to ask questions like uh had, did you have you ever bought from this retailer before mm -hmm. no uh you know just generic what, stuff like what's that. your favorite atv right got it yeah right uh and then uh, I told her what my plan was moving forward. She's like, oh, that's a good idea. I think that's going to help you. So, I mean, eh. I hope it works. It's it's just, I mean, it's not even a, like, how do we stop this? It's like, how do I make this easier to deal with? Yeah. When I get identity again, how yeah. do I yeah. expedite this process? Because like you said, I mean, it's great that by, you know, the middle of the day Thursday, you were more or less back to where you were but it means you had to spend half of your day thursday well it also like yeah i had to go to pnc and sit down and talk to a guy for a while about it and mm -hmm. explain what i wanted to do and he even said he's like i don't know if we can do that and uh because my plan was a little more ambitious and then i dialed it back and he's mm -hmm. like all right we can do that and luckily <laughs> i didn't have a lot to do thursday morning at the store no. So, well, I was in River North, so I had more time on my hands, so I was I able see. to go through. And uh, another thing that was in my favor is that the computer that I was on, that that browser is linked to my browser. Mm -hmm. So it had all of uh, the places I needed to go. It already oh, had great. The, their password stored and things like that. Perfect. Because most of it's stuff like, I, I wouldn't know how to do this. Sure. Yeah, I, I was, uh, I had to look something up for a customer on Wednesday. And I'm like, can you hold on for a minute? I need to, to dig this up. But I had to go in <laughs> to my password manager. And I'm like, what is my password for this site? <laughs> to be able to, to take care of that. Sure. And it all happened. And it, it's just frustrating, but it's also an indictment of society that it's like, all right, well, now let's let's deal with that. There's no time to panic. Yeah, this just um, happens regularly. I, I am a little annoyed because uh, they took $1,200 out of our account. Yeah, that's and, not a credit card. That's that's this our debit, bank. This bit debit card, and <laughs> yeah. and they'll they'll put it back, but they're not putting it back right away. No, so it's just twelve hundred dollars that we just don't have. That for we a just while. don't have. Yeah. 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 Like I'm not I'm not at all worried about their uh, investigation. Like the last time it was, somebody used it to pay off a to 
pay something at a bank that I've never been to, right. didn't know existed. Mm-hmm. Uh, although apparently it is the parent company who owns the Best Buy cards. Oh, okay. So now I have an account with that bank, right. but I didn't at that time. So like, I can honestly say, I, I have never used this bank before. Yeah. And I've never been to it. Like, so here's here's the thing I was going to uh, mention. was that the, So when I first see this charge, $1,200, and I, I see the card number, so I know it's my card. And I have to think, what? Is it something that I did? <laughs> but more than that, you have to think about, is it the parent company of somebody? Because I had just given, over the phone, uh, my credit, that credit card information to the people that are working on our banners hmm. or our banner for the for the River North store yeah. to get all the permits and, and the approval from the city as well as make the actual banner. Right. So I had I gave them a card to put on file and the ATV store amount was less than what they said it was going to cost, but I that, they're also going to do it like oh, we're going we're going to like yeah, we'll pay for these things first and this right. thing that thing. So my first thought was is this their parent company? Yeah, like maybe it's not an ATV store, but like the name of the company is ATV something or other. So I'm like, all right, I should call them and ask. Well, let me just cut into like, let me just Google this phrase that's in the thing. Google it. Bam, it is 100% an ATV website. Uh-huh. So I'm like, all right, it's not them. It's definitely not them. And then I had to call them and say, hey, that card is no good. Yeah. I'll have to get a new card to you tomorrow, which I called and said, hey, I have a new card, but they never called me back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so there, cause there was one time, one time I donated to a charity and then my card got stolen. And at the same time that I got identity thieved, there was a charge I didn't recognize. Well, it turned out it was that charity, but the charge wasn't made to that charity. It was made to their parent company, mm-hmm. which I didn't know what it was. And so I'm like, Oh, cancel that. Yeah. That's not legit. Whoops. No, it was. It was a charitable donation. Sorry, charity. And it turns out that that happened to the uh, woman that I was talking to about this from PNC. Uh, a, a, an old, an ex-landlord, the first time she had to pay them, she got like the, or she, it was an automatic withdrawal kind of thing. Okay. But the money came out from a place she never heard of. So she stopped payment, you mm-hmm. know, kind of thing. And the landlord was furious. So like that, why did you do that? And she's like, I don't know it was your company. And he's like, well, no, then, you know, he was, uh, my, my point was, she did the right thing. Right. He should have told her, hey, I know that it's. When the money's deducted. It's George's rent. From this account. Is where, where you paid to, but it comes yeah. from, you know, stud guy holdings or right. whatever. And he maintained that that was none of her business. <laughs> uh, disagree. Uh, well, it's, it's, I'm funny. It's funny you say that because she said that everyone she's talked to about it, most people side with him. That's so weird. Agreed. I don't understand uh, why you would do that. Agreed. Seems like the least you could do is say, hey, when I'm going to be taking X amount of money from you every month, this is the name of the company that's taking it from you. So you don't think it's fraudulent. I want to jump back to one quick thing about the uh, Yelp review, the the website that I cannot remember the name of it. It's, it's just small, like the something dot co dot UK. Mm-hmm. They didn't they just like took a couple of their favorite uh, critiques of this review and posted them. But their little intro header said like basically the entitlement of this this reddit user or the, this uh uh like air quotes disgruntled customer really takes the biscuit takes the biscuit even yeah yeah that made me very happy uh-huh like oh look at that that's adorable takes the biscuit well, uh it, i know it's not the time of the month where we uh mention uh patrons but we we do have a new name mentioning level patron dal do you remember who that is i don't who you you personally don't remember who it is? It's a uh, a woman named Diane Bush. Hey, it's my mom. Yeah. Hey, do you know who I forgot to call last night? My mom. <laughs> uh, she texted me in the afternoon to uh, to see if I was around, and I was actually out running errands. And I'm like, oh no, I'll I'll be home in a little bit. And she's like, oh, I'll I'll be home after six if you want to give me a call. I said, oh yeah, sure. And then I remembered that at about four p.m. today. Oops. And I went, oh no. So, I mean, I don't, it's a little late at night, especially for Florida, but she's usually not in, in bed super early. So I, I might take a few minutes after this recording to give my mom a call to go on. I'm so sorry. Uh, and also thank you for being a, a patron. Thanks mom. You, you don't, you don't have to do that, Diane. Thanks mom. That's very, it's very she kind wants of you. to, she likes doing that. Uh, I also got a call from my dad today, although he did not know he was calling. Me. <laughs> 
There was a, a lot of rustling, a lot of rustling. Sure. So I'm like, are you are you trying to get like, is this a butt dial? Are you trying to to? He was he's putting it back in his pocket and he called me somehow. Mm-hmm. Uh, real quick segue. Yeah. Uh, I we got a, a reorder in at River North today, and so there that were, can't be that would imply the things sell. There were a couple books in there that we needed for a special order, so I set them aside and I checked everything in and put everything else out, and then I called on the special order, and uh, the the person I was calling answered. I said, yeah, this is Adele from Challengers Comics. I just wanted to let you know that we got in the books that you'd ordered. Uh, and it was, uh, okay, so, so wait, what is this? Uh, Challengers Comics? Okay, but wh- like, what, what was I supposed to do? We got in some books for you? Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, you got them in? You got the comics? Yeah, they, we got them in here for you. Oh, great. And then he, he's going to come in, and he's, what time we're open until him. But it's just this whole process of, like, why are you making me feel like an asshole? Like, you asked me to get these books, I got these books for you, and then I got to jump through these hoops. And it's, yeah, just this thing of, like, I, did you forget? It was it was Saturday. You came in Saturday and asked me to order books. <laughs> well, this, you this know, six days later. Often, as the person that is calling on the special <laughs> orders, you may not have been privy to when the order was taken. Uh-huh. For, <laughs> for example. Oh, like, but, but I'm I, the one who took the order. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> this is a guy I talked to on Saturday, ordered these books for him, and then when they came in, I called him. I, I think, honestly, what a lot of it is is that um, a lot of people who will get special orders from us uh, have literally no idea what our business is called. Right. We're just the comic shop. Yeah. So when you say Challengers Comics, like, they already don't know what that means, uh, even though it has comics in the name. Uh, that is my new way to answer the phone. I say, Challengers Comics, Bucktown, Challengers Comics, River North, because I want to make sure I'm saying comic book store and the city, the, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, the neighborhood. Yeah. So they know which one they're calling. That is how I do that now. But uh, I was calling a special order. Uh, uh, same thing. A reorder came in. Uh, some graphic novel special orders for a, a gentleman named Steve. So, and I, when it's that, when somebody answers the phone that I'm calling for a special order, uh, I, I, no, I don't just go, is Steve there? I'm like, hey, this is Patrick from Challengers yep. Comics. Is Steve there? Yeah, always. So I'm like, hey, is this is Patrick from Challengers Comics. Is Steve there? Oh, yeah, hey. Like, yeah, so uh, the books you ordered are in, uh, yeah, we can hold them for a week. Does Sam work Wednesday? What? Can't you pick him up for Oh, this is Sam's boyfriend. Oh. Yeah. She should have, I, that, that should have been what was put in the special order book, is Sam's boyfriend. And then under phone number put an A, so we just give them to her. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Something like that. Uh-huh. Uh, I feel that she did that on purpose, so I would have to call him, because uh, she thinks that's funny. Uh, I guess it is a little bit. It, I mean, it, it, oh, she thought it was hilarious because oh, I immediately perfect, texted her right. afterwards saying, you tricked how, me into calling Steve. How dare you? Yep. Everybody's fired. I mean, that happens a lot. Yeah. That happens a lot. Yeah. Uh, I got to say, as far as firing Kent goes, uh-huh. uh, he's been very productive the last few weeks on his Thursdays. That's great. He's He's gotten through, if not all of, most of the things we left for. Uh-huh. Um, and then... Uh, Gina polished everything else off today. Uh, I on uh, on Wednesday when I'd seen Kent, I had. Uh, I never see Kent anymore. I do true. not see Kent. It's true. Um, I complimented him on on how much he had accomplished on the previous Thursday. Oh, nice! And he uh, he indicated that some of that was because uh, he did not have to bring a lot of people up. Yeah. So he was able to get through a lot more back issues. And yeah. I thought that's sad. I assume it's the same reason uh, tomorrow. Probably. Mm-hmm. Or I'm sorry, uh, this week. Not tomorrow? What? Where no, did they come from? I hope not. Uh, yeah. Uh, we have a, an interesting event coming up at River North only on Thursday, February 27th. It is the day before C2E2 starts. And it is a publisher who is setting up at C2E2, is doing a store appearance first, and it is the the people from Zenoscope. They're going to be set up at River North with a whole bunch of exclusive covers and things. And uh, basically, like, it'll be a small version of their show booth, but Mm -hmm. before the show starts. That's cool. Uh, And they they wanted to do it with us, and they wanted to do it in River North. So, sure, man. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. That that could be something different. I hope it's successful for them. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I always like when people go out of their way to want to do events with us. Yeah, that's very nice. We had a family in today who was from the middle of Ohio, and uh, it was 
I'm not exactly sure how, I think it was a, a mom and a dad and their son. Mm-hmm. But the son was close to being an adult. Okay. And uh, the mom was chastising the, the uh, two other people in the family for not reining her in from what she wanted to buy. <laughs> and they each had things they were getting as well. And then she kept finding more. Mm-hmm. And then just when she thought she was done, she saw the new Harrow County and said, oh my God, that looks so great. I have to get it. And I'm like, yeah, this is a uh, Harrow County, but 10 years later, it's like, Wait, this, there's there's more of this? Oh, yeah, don't read this. No, this is Let, the sequel. <laughs> here, here's the first volume. Oh, I'll take that. Yeah. That's great. But it was, it was uh, they're like, we come to Chicago every once in a while. We make it a point. We, we definitely want to come here. In fact, uh, there's other books that you have that I want, like uh, Tea Dragon Festival. But I'm saving those for our next trip to Chicago so we can come back and get them. From oh, there. that's sweet. Yeah, right? That's very sweet. It's so great. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, how far are you guys from Cleveland? Oh, like two hours. I'm like, oh, well, there's a there's a good store up there that you can go to, Carol and John's. And they're like, well, we'll we'll check that out when we're in that, we're in that area. I'm like, all right, because there's there's literally no store by them. Sure. But yeah, it's it's always it's gratifying when people come from other states to see your store. Mm-hmm. It's frustrating when people who live in your neighborhood <laughs> didn't know you were there. Uh huh. And one of the things I tell people about the slow start to River North is that 12 years ago, we were just two guys starting out on a thing. Mm -hmm. Now we're a brand. Yes. We're an internationally recognized brand. And it didn't matter. And (laughs) while there's a lot of uh, things to talk about how the store is, like why the store started and that process, uh, in a strange swerve... You don't have to listen to this podcast to hear it. You can listen to it on next week's off-panel podcast Whoa. with David Harper. Can I really? I, I mean, I assume it's next week, so it might not be. Okay. But I can listen to it? Oh, yeah. Do I need like a subscription or something, or can I just, can uh, I just listen I mean, to you it? can subscribe to it on iTunes, but it's the off-panel podcast. Okay, but I mean, I don't need to be like a Patreon subscriber or something? No, no. You, I mean, no. You, If you're a Patreon subscriber, like with ours, mm-hmm. you get it early. Okay. Like, it'll it'll drop on Saturday and everybody else gets it, I think, Monday. Okay. Just just like ours, actually. Okay. Cool. Uh, but he will also have a, a man. In the, like, the very beginning of this interview, I'm like, hey, man, I'm a huge fan of your website. I love what you do. I always go to your website because I forgot it was called Sketch.com. Mm-hmm. Literally forgot the name. Ske- sketched. Oh, yeah, Sketched without sketched. the vowels. Sketched. But he used, to be, he used to be part of the Multiversity website, so I would, I would occasionally, I mean, he, I would do stuff with him for that. Sure. But I, I have to keep saying, don't say multiversity. Nope. Don't say multiversity. Don't do that. It's his new one. Because Sketch.com went away for a while, and he focused on off-panel. Now, Sketch is back, and, he, and off-panel never went away. So I'm like, yeah, I love going to off-panel. That's, that's your podcast, not your website. Uh-huh. But it, uh, off-panel is one of my favorite podcasts. Uh, I'm on it like once a year. This is my annual visit where we check in on how retail is going. <laughs> and at the same time, he has a long-form piece where he talks to retailers about that same topic Mm -hmm. there was very little crossover honestly between what is going to be in that long form written piece versus the podcast okay Uh, and in fact like my pages of notes that i had i didn't necessarily need oh but the point that i'm trying to make for that is that that long form is also challengers involved but that was you who i did was on that one i did those questions yeah it was a it was a day i was working at blue so i had some time on my hands and you're like hey do you want to do this because I'm, I'm doing the podcast. Do you want to do the questions? And I said, sure. Yeah, I was afraid of uh, repeating myself and also stagnating. And uh, like I said at the very, very beginning of this podcast, not having that spontaneity to it. Yeah, like, I mean, I think we talked about this a long, long time ago. We did um, uh, Gina Gagliano's podcast, uh, Graphic Novel TK. Yeah. And they had provided us... And Allison Wilgus. And Allison Wilgus. Um, they had provided us the questions in advance... Uh, just as a, like, hey, this is what we're going to be talking about. And I kind of didn't want to read the questions in advance. Yeah. Because I, I wanted it to feel more organic and feel more spontaneous. So, yeah, I mean, the last thing I would want to do is, like, go in with material. Like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. I don't... I, that's probably more professional, but I just... I'm less interested in doing that. And it feels less like a conversation and more like just facts. Like which, talking points. Yeah. yeah. Which, when I said I had pages of notes, it was just stats... Sure. And and lists, sure. you know. Because, yeah, like we were doing the, the numbers podcast a couple weeks ago or whatever. Um, there's a few things that you'd want to refer to to go, oh, I want to make sure that I note that, like, this is how many 
image graphic novels there were, or this is what percentages changed or whatever. So you need those, those statistics handy, but just the analysis is something that you and I will just usually look at and go, okay, well, this is what we can draw from that data. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know how long it's going to be, but we did talk for a good two hours. Crazy. Yeah, I always feel bad for David because I think he and forgets how long I'll talk for. And he had his, to stop to feed his cat. His poor hungry cats started I was because talking for a very Patrick long time. is like, and another thing. Yeah. And honestly, uh, what I thought was an exclusive for him isn't because the Yelp review had just happened. Uh-huh. So I read it at the very end of his podcast. Oh, well, I'm like, hey, you're getting this first, uh-huh. but I don't, I don't know how the timing is going to work out. But this is how fast the news cycle goes. Yeah, that's true. By the time he's going to have it, it's already going to have been digested by the internet. No one's going to care. Yeah, that's true. But he didn't, I mean, just the first review, he, it, it was still up on Yelp at the time. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's okay. The second one will be up forever. Forever. Because and this is the world we live in where awful people on the internet win. They just get to win. That's that's just the status quo of the internet now. But you, dear listener, are not an awful person. You are a very discerning and, I'll say it, worthwhile human being. You're taking a lot on faith here, Patrick. Thanks for listening. And keep reading comics. This has been Contest of Challengers. Thanks for listening. Keep reading comics. Challengers is located at 1845 Northwestern Avenue in the Bucktown neighborhood of Chicago. 773-278-0155. And in the River North neighborhood of Chicago at 750 North Franklin Street, number 103-312-285-2252. Keep up to date with new releases and events at challengerscomics.com. Like Challengers Comics on Facebook, follow at Challengers on Twitter, and help fund this podcast at patreon.com slash challengers.